Besides selling the R7 lineup for the upper mid-range class, Oppo continues to strive on smartphones with premium looks and feels. Not only being fashionable, Oppo also wants to make smartphones that could be a no-brainer choice for the rapidly growing selfie fan base among us. Those are the main ideas towards creating this phone we were talking about, the Oppo F1. At a glance, Oppo F1 design is very familiar if you have seen other Oppo smartphones such as the Oppo R7. The build quality is no joke. Solid, precise, and sleek with the aluminum back cover and a 2.5 D Gorilla Glass front panel plus the nice metallic accent around the phone. The front panel, white in color, is quite reminiscent of the Apple iPhone 6 sans the home button. One more similarity to that is the protruding camera module, which means you better protect this phone with an extra case to protect the lens from scratching. Unlike the Oppo R7 Plus, the F1 has three capacitive buttons under the screen. The company logo is only to be seen at the back. At the right side, we are able to spot the hybrid dual SIM tray just like on the Xiaomi Redmi 3, whose micro SD card slot can be replaced with a nano SIM card. Hands down, Oppo succeeded at packing a lot of premium quality and materials into this mid-range smartphone. Like the Redmi 3, Oppo F1 comes with a Snapdragon 616 CPU and Adreno 405 graphics, 16GB of storage but superior on its 3GB worth of RAM, above the average smartphone in its class. The only thing this phone got me a slight anger is the low screen pixel density. As a comparison, Xiaomi Mi 4i which is currently priced significantly less, packs a full HD display. I totally don't get it why Oppo decided to make a good mid-range phone in 2016 with a resolution below 300 ppi, but other than that, the colors and contrast coming out of the screen is acceptable, nice, and bright. In terms of running standard apps including playing some games, I don't think there's any compromise in performance and experience on this device running Color OS 2.1 on top of Android Lollipop. The amount of gesture options is one thing I like about Color OS, despite the icons that already look old-fashioned and irrelevant to Google's material design. The battery is 2500 mAh in capacity, that is pretty much the minimum acceptable capacity for a 5-inch phone, but sadly doesn't have the awesome Oppo V00 rapid charging built in. I wish Oppo was less thingy about the display quality, but this phone is still a good value among mid-range Android smartphones. Imaging quality is of course among Oppo's top priorities for the F1. There's a 13 megapixel bright camera unit on the back and a front 8 megapixel unit, also with a bright f2.0 aperture. Image captured is quite rich in contrast and details, even more when Ultra HD image mode is in use. But again, it is a camera not so usable in less than ideal lighting conditions. One prominent feature in its camera software is Beautify 3.0, that easily could make you much better looking than in reality mainly by cleaning up and brightening your face. At least, both cameras are able to capture 1080p videos at 30fps. In my experience, Oppo already did a pretty good job adding some premium looks and feels to the F1. The camera capabilities deserve to be considered, especially to take good selfies. But for those who are also unsatisfied like me in the screen department, I suggest you to seek other good alternatives like the Xiaomi Mi 4i, Mi 4C, and Lenovo A7000+. That is my short review on the Oppo F1. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.